right. The next project is the project provided by our friends from Mossip. So let's have a look on that. Present about uh, NG. Uh, it's a digital wallet solution from Mossip. Um, we are excited to be uh, one of the core contributors to the Open Wallet Foundation. I'm Sasi Kumar. Um, you can call me Sasi. Uh, I'm head of engineering in Mossip. Um, let's jump on to the presentation. Uh, what is Mossip? Uh, Mossip is an open source project. Um, we established in 2018. We announced our first code in the open source somewhere around 2019 after one year of our work. Um, and from then on, we have been building projects um, in the open for all the countries to use. Our predominant customers are countries who enable their citizens to have a national ID. Um, identity is a big, a big problem in quite a lot of the countries. Um, some of the countries are stuck with the vendor lock solutions. Some of the countries have attempted to build their own and have been successful in issuing those IDs, but not been very successful in actually putting the ID to the use. So what MOSAP offers at this point in time is an ability to uh, issue ID for quite a lot of citizens uh, across the globe. So we today operate in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. Um, we have close to 11 odd countries who work with us today, and we expect that number to grow. Uh, we impact approximately uh, 400 million people's life using this identity platform. Um, 100 million people have received already IDs uh, with this particular, particular platform and they've been uh, using their IDs to uh, avail social services or social benefits from their respective governments. Uh, the project is hosted out of um, a university called IIITB. Uh, this project is a non-profit. Uh, we've been currently sponsored and funded by Bill and Melina Gates Foundation, NORAD, and Pratiksha Trust. Okay, so uh, what does NG do, NG do with MOSIP, right? Um, in, in some of you for whom NG is a relatively new word, um, it's a Korean language word. Uh, it essentially means recognize. How do I bring recognition? to the individual and that is why we named our wallet as NG. NG is a reference implementation um, to enable countries uh, to provide their citizens with a wallet where they could have the mobile ID which are in the mobile for them to use. And uh, the wallet has been um, in under development with us uh, for almost uh, a year and a half now. Um, we have been working on various um, trial and errors and POCs across our customer base, uh, testing the uh, wallet in the market. Um, so it comes with relatively a huge amount of experience and the field knowledge that we gained by using it in uh, um, countries in Asia and Africa. The wallet, also another interesting uh, feature, uh, the wallet can also be used as an authenticator to prove one's identity um, within them. Most of being a national ID, um, quite a lot of our countries, not all of them, but quite a lot of our countries, do use biometric as a way of verifying and assuring a person really exists in front of them. This is to eliminate ghosts and eliminate duplicates. And to assure that there is an individual who's really involved in availing government services. So it's quite a lot of times there is also a need to Prove yourself, not just cryptographically, but prove yourself that you are a physical individual who exists. And it's not a simple password that somebody has uh, used it to transfer. Um, so in order to achieve that, NG also acts as an authenticator within our system. This ensures a presence-based verification um, and gives us um, and the countries uh, a very high assurance um, uh, for what the service deliveries are. Okay. Uh, today, uh, there are a lot of standards in use, but the, some of the predominant standards that we're going to speak about um, is OpenID for VC and OpenID for VPU over BLE. These are two important standards that we have been working on. Um, in one case, we have been uh, more consumer. In other case, we have been the creator. Uh, so OpenID for VC, we, we consume a lot of information that's been already created by the OpenID for VP community um, and the VC community. Um, for the OpenID for VP uh, over PLE, 
we have been one of the uh, largest contributor for that standard uh, we have put our code in the open source and soon i'll explain you uh, what exists um, and how we do it and uh, our story behind yble okay and a quick um, you're going to see a demo a uh, little later and torsten is going to be there uh, demoing uh, our application um, whatever um, uh, whatever exists as of today uh, but in in chart what does it do it, it enables the citizens of multiple countries that we operate uh, to download their id uh, in a verifiable credentials format um, onto the wallet onto the phone secures them using multiple cryptographic technologies that we know of and we go to work extensively in that space uh, for the next one one and a half years uh, to to ensure there is quite a lot of privacy driven uh, signature schemes that could be built in uh, but as of today it's, it has a very simple uh, signature schemes so we call that as a resident app this uh, the, the resident gets this application downloads their card and from then on they could verify this card um, with their mobile wallet and it enables the service providers to use this wallet and not rely on a central authentication server to verify the individual so this allows um, two important aspect quite a lot of times our customers who are the citizens of the um, of multiple countries that we operate in do not have connectivity uh, the um, government offices who go in to verify this individual or um, the ngos who work in spaces where there is not enough connectivity often face a very critical problem of using a physical card uh, the assurance level of a physical card becomes very difficult um, compliance and regulatory standards to prove that an individual existed when they actually serviced them uh, becomes very difficult so uh, being um, um, coming from and more offline side of the story uh, the application provides uh, very very interesting options uh, to provide offline mechanisms as well as online mechanisms online predominantly all of us are used to offline is something that we have been uh, predominantly advocating um, which could let people to avail services even in spite of connectivity problems okay um, and uh, there is a verifier app that we are working on the verifier app is more like a library and a proof of concept uh, so we are working with multiple other open source companies um, either either private companies which have open source some part of our uh, work or um, uh, non-profits uh, who are actually into the same space so we are working with uh, multiple of them uh, to use our libraries um, this is again as i said it's it's nothing to do with just mosif uh, it's to do with the standards so use this very fair application and the very fair libraries and build the application so that they could actually verify the individual and serve them on the field um, so that's potentially what um, ng today offers uh, to its users uh, what's in the roadmap um, as i said um, we've gone through a quite a lot of aggressive implementation so far uh, one we have been um, able to use and adapt uh, the open id for vc specification second um, we have done a year long exercise in adapting ble for almost 50 odd phones so the ble layers that we have built so far uh, we could guarantee you that across 50 models across uh, from android version 9 and above it has a 100 percent compatibility and it ensures that it can work from the lowest phone to the highest phone uh, that the end users have and just to remind you all um, we operate in a space where a country citizens are going to use this application and uh, the models of the phone and the variety is going to be humongous and in the next one year we're expecting that we will learn quite a lot so ng comes with pre-built um, telemetry protocols uh, to ensure we can collect a lot of these information back to help the citizens better obviously uh, privacy is a big a game we do not collect anything private about the user there is no location there is no information about who you are it's purely about what error occurs on the phone and we collect those information so that we could fix our code we can make better better code at the implementation level so one thing is to be guaranteed that after our launch and maybe one year one and a half years down the launch we would have something which could work predominantly in almost all the phones so that's has been what we have been hacking through so long but what's up 
next. The next stories are going to be a lot more interesting. Uh, one of our work um, has been uh, on analyzing the SDJWT standards and we are excited um, that uh, we're going to work on that standard. Um, obviously, there is a final go-ahead that uh, we are expecting uh, with our research community here. Uh, so once we have the final um, threat maps built for the SDJWT, we would be at full swing to uh, start implementing them. Uh, that's going to be one of our uh, next big work uh, in the coming year. We will also be continuing to uh, improve upon the BLE specification to make it easier and safer uh, for people to use. And that's an ongoing exercise and our commitment to that continues uh, from our side. Um, uh, apart from this, uh, OpenID for VP is also one of the important areas that we would be working. So you should see us uh, being very aggressively working. The code is going to also change very aggressively um, to make sure um, multiple of the countries that we are working with can adapt. Okay? Uh, there's going to be some layers of biometrics that's going to come in while we're not going to build a biometric face verification into the wallet, but it is going to offer a plug and play opportunity for biometric vendors to plug in their layers and provide this authenticator um, in, in, in the countries. Now coming back uh, to the code contribution, um, we, the entire NG is going to be a code contribution, um, but uh, what's the most exciting code contribution that we're going to make um, is the work that we did with the uh, BLE. Uh, so how do you verify, how do you transfer a presentation, verifiable presentation over a BLE channel uh, with completely offline mode? Uh, to a verifier and have 100% assurance that the individual is the same as he claims to be uh, with all the trust built in. Uh, that's what the protocol is about and um, I think we are like 80 to 90% compliant to that protocol. We have released our code out in the open and we will continue to make improvements in the protocol as well as in the implement implementation and that's going to go hand in hand and um, we would be happy for anybody who would like to contribute. Uh, anybody who would like to use this and evaluate um, and, and, and work with us. Uh, as of now, it's going to be JSON LD profile. Um, most of uh, from its inception has been more of a JSON LD advocate, uh, but we are not limited by JSON LD. But most of our first implementations has been over JSON LD. Uh, today, our issuance layer um, works based on JSON LD. So at the end of any registration process in our uh, most of um, workflow systems. The end of it is a verifiable credentials uh, with customized schema for the countries. A verifiable presentation comes out uh, in a JSON LD format. And we expect to continue in that uh, space, but as I said, we are also looking out to enhance it not just for JSON LD, but to support the AWT and other formats as well as we proceed into the space. Uh, so Project Tuvali is our library for OpenID for VP and BLE. So today it supports Android and iOS both. Uh, there are a lot of native code in place in order to achieve it. We, we have gone through a quite a lot of learning exercise in this process. Um, and quick note, what does a Tuvali stand for? Uh, Tuvali is uh, based out of a Tamil word um, yeah, where I come from. Uh, this essentially means it's a tunnel. So BLE is a tunnel that gets created between a verifier, a secure tunnel that gets created between a verifier and the person who wants to present or person who's in need of a service. So it enables you to um, transfer your data, uh, your presentations in a more secure fashion to your verifier and with the assurance that the verifier could potentially have. Okay, now, this is based on BLE 4.2 and, uh, and supports all the way till BLE 5 um, and the latest versions. Um, we have tried this to work around with uh, multiple layers of Rust in the past. Um, we tried our best to hack through things, uh, but there were limitations uh, with the way how Android works and um, how iOS works and how Rust would be uh, binding them. So we, we had a fallback and start a lot of native code. So now most of our code comprises of Kotlin 
uh, for Android and Swift for iOS, um, which handles most of the BLE complexities uh, within itself. Okay. Um, rest assured, uh, the complexity of the BLEs and the different models, uh, people who have worked in the BLE space would know uh, the complexity that's involved. Every phone is different, every model gives you a different way of handling things. Uh, but uh, I think we've done a pretty good job so far. Uh, we expect to do uh, better as we go into the production and into the people's hand. We will learn more, we will make this better. So that's a, a big work that's coming in into the Open World Foundation from our side. Um, obviously, there are going to be a lot of cleanups and other things that's uh, going to happen because it has a history of from where it originated and where it is uh, moving towards. So the cleanup is going to be an ongoing activity. Uh, but once we are done with the basic cleanups, we should be able to uh, contribute this back uh, to the Open Wallet Foundation. Um, one of the other work um, the NG module is going to contribute is also about collecting and issued verifiable credentials using OpenID for VCI. Um, and this is um, based out of a product called eSignet that we have developed. Uh, eSignet is a OpenID compliant um, uh, authentication um, and uh, as a end product of it the BCI is built as one of the modules uh, the BCI is built as a plugin and it enables us uh, to connect to any existing data source not just um, a verifiable credentials but it could literally connect to any existing data source convert them into a verifiable credentials and then issue back to the wallet so uh, it's once again an interesting work. Uh, it's going to be put to use um, across 80 million people uh, very soon. Uh, you should be hearing us. Um, I mean, we are preparing uh, ourselves for a, um, beta testing. Uh, we did an alpha testing in one of our countries uh, with uh, 1,000 plus people. Uh, things work pretty brilliantly. Uh, we are trying to test this now um, in, in as a beta um, into the countries, we are going to launch it, uh, which has approximately uh, 80 million user base. So that's an exciting work that's coming in, and that's going to be in the open source, available for uh, all of you to use. Um, and there's going to be a lot of learning. Um, any help here uh, is greatly appreciated uh, from the community. And quick, um, that's uh, pretty much all about what we're going to contribute for Open Wallet Foundation at this point in time. Um, and as I said, we are an open source community. Uh, we have pretty much everything in the open source, uh, but it would be nice to have uh, some of these core modules uh, to be part of the Open Wallet Foundation and, and we could share knowledges and experiences together and make this um, a better code uh, for a better implementation for the future. Um, and here are all our links uh, that could help you all to reach out to us, uh, look at it and help us um, and work together as a community together. Uh, thank you. Uh, now we should be able to see a small demo of how the NG actually works uh, in real time. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye. So we're going to show now the demo of the Mossip wallet. NG, as we are aware, is a mobile application that facilitates storage of verifiable credentials in a single digital wallet and further facilitates sharing credentials with decentralized verification of identity in an offline mode through Bluetooth. In this demonstration, we will showcase how a resident can use the NG application to first download and then share his or her credential with a service provider to avail the required services. For this, the resident opens the app and opts to download the card, which is the national ID in our case. The resident provides the UIN or VID number as available. So let's enter the UIN and initiate the download process. Note that the initial download needs to happen in an online mode. And at this point, during registration.
be configured to be used based on the nature of service being delivered and the level of assurance required to avail it. Let's first carry out a simple sharing of the card by clicking on the share option. Upon successful sharing of the card, the service provider receives it on his application. Further, the service provider can also view the card in the received cards section. Let's now share the card with the selfie option. For this, the resident clicks on the scan option, scans the requesting QR code and clicks on share with selfie. The resident captures a selfie and submits it for face verification against the photo held in the card. Upon successful verification, as we see, the card will be shared with the service provider. In this manner, Inji can be used by residents to securely download, store and share cards in the form of verifiable credentials with service providers to avail services. Find more information on how to set up and install NG at docs.mosip.io slash NG or reach out to the MOSIP team through community.mosip.io to send us your comments and queries. Thank you. So thanks a lot and thanks for your attention. Goodbye.